This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I would like to, if I may, introduce you to some of my favorite tools in Adobe Illustrator. Now, I've probably said that about something else earlier in this lesson series, and I'll probably forget and say it again about something else, but I do like these tools. The Pathfinder tools allow you to make simple shapes, put them together, and with one click of a button, depending on which button you click, make something much more complicated. They've been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, the original Pathfinder tools were under the filter menu years ago. So you might still hear old timers in Illustrator calling them or referring to them as the Pathfinder filters. If you are in the painting workspace, which I hope you are, then you can click this button right down here to get to them at the very bottom. There they are. Pathfinder. I'll pull that panel out so we get a nice good look at it. There are 10 buttons within the Pathfinder panel. Four of them are defined as shape modes, and the other six are the pathfinders. Uh, for the sake of this particular lesson and these segments, let's not worry about that difference. We'll talk about that later in another lesson. The first one of the first top four, the first one on the left is called Unite. It's got a very simple purpose in life. Take multiple objects and make them one, basically. So let's start by doing this. Pick up your oh, ellipse tool. Draw ellipse on the screen. I'm going to do a perfect circle with the shift key, of course. I'm going to do another ellipse. I'm ellipse happy today. This ellipse, I'm going to pick my selection tool up and place it right about there. I'm going to hold the alt key, which makes a copy, and drag it. But I'm also going to hold the shift key down so it doesn't go up or down. And try to visually line it up on the other side. Something about like that looks all right. Let's change their colors just for the fun of it. Okay, red circle, black circle, yellow circle. I want to put them all together. You may begin recognizing this shape as the Mickey Mouse silhouette, but you want to be careful about saying Mickey Mouse because Disney, and rightly so, is very protective of their copyright. I want to make a mouse silhouette. That might be better. Select them all. Click this button right here, and boom, there you go. You've got a silhouette. Now, how did that work? It put them all together. Where they overlapped, it eliminated them and made one shape with one fill and one stroke. Let me undo that. The reason they went black is because the black circle, stacking order-wise, was on top. Now remember, anytime you draw something or bring something into Adobe Illustrator, the last thing in becomes the top of the stacking order. If there were no stacking order in Adobe Illustrator, you'd either A, have to have everything in its own layer, or B, it would bump into each other. We do have a stacking order. This one is indeed on top of that one. If I change the order by clicking, say, on the big yellow one, going to the word object, arrange, there you go, bring the front, and do the same thing again, it'll be yellow. It's up to you. Doesn't make any difference at all. It's the top one. Can you change the color now? Of course. Go over, change it to any color that you want it to be. You want it to go back to black. Come over here with it selected and change it to black. No big deal. So the Unite brings it together. Let me undo that twice so I can get it back to where it was. There's another change in the Pathfinder set that's different from the previous version. It's no big deal. You just have to understand what's going on. When you select all the items and click the button, you are making multiple objects into one. doesn't matter how many you have. But it didn't work like that up front. The first time you clicked in the previous version actually made a compound path. Let me show you how you do that now. Three objects. Don't click the button until you hold on the Alt key. As you can see, they are a compound path. If I unselect it, it looks the same. So what's the difference? Well, there's one disadvantage. A compound path can be much more complex because you're not really losing anything. You're just making it look like it's one. So if you have a lot of anchor points, you're going to have a problem maybe printing. It's possible. Not with this one, but you could have something pretty complicated. The other thing is, and this is a good thing, is that you can undo this anytime you want to, even days later, because it is a compound path. So if you come back here again and you look at this and, you know, you just don't want to wear it anymore, what you do is come over here and click this button and go into Release Compound Shape. And it will take it back to exactly the way it was before. Now, if you want to confirm it, easiest way is just click the Expand button. If you don't hold the Alt key down, you get a single object, no matter how many objects you're using. If you hold the Alt key down, you get a compound shape on any of those top shape mode tools. What's next? Minus front. 
Let's do this. Let's change him back to like a black. And let's say that we're making a mask for, oh, I don't know, Carnival or Halloween or something like that, right? So I'm going to come over here and pick up my circle tool again. And I'm going to draw a circle that would be maybe an eye. Let's go ahead and make that yellow. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up what's called the Convert Anchor Point tool. And I'm going to pop it right there. And I'm going to move it out just one. I'm using the arrow keys to push that one point to the right. Let's come over here and let's move that to about here. Now I'm going to make another one by holding the Alt key down and let's bring it to about here. Then what I'm going to do, this will be easy, is go to a corner until you see the bent arrow and turn it around. Oh man, that's evil Mickey Mouse. Hmm, that's a good Halloween mask. But the next command is called minus front. If this actually were a template for a real mask, that would be where the holes are for the eyes. Because, I mean, I really, if you wear it and there's no holes, you're going to, like, bump into things. What we're going to do is select everything again. So the first thing we did is we made this into one. Now we've got these two little evil eyes on the mask. And we're going to go ahead and click this button, which is minus front. And there you go. What did it do? Minus front will take the front most objects, no matter how many there are, and it will punch holes through whatever's underneath it. Once they are done punching holes, they go away, and they will not influence the stroke or the fill of the original object. So we went from a bunch of circles to evil mouse mask using Unite and Minus Front. Fun tools to work with. Like I said, I do like these tools.